Hi, my name is Leroy Hearing I'm with Crossway Ministries. We uh, thank you for joining us for our weekly podcast. We hope you will not only join us this week, but continue to join us on a weekly basis. We put out a teaching podcast each and every week. Some of them are a single item podcast. Most of them are a series. And if you come in on episode two, three, or four, you can always go back to your Facebook page and pull up the preceding uh, podcast. Or you can go to our website, notwithoutblood.com, and you can pull up uh, not only the podcast teaching, but you can pull up mm, two or three hundred additional uh, programming teachings uh, from the Word of God. We encourage you to do that. Again, the website is notwithoutblood.com. Uh, for today, <clears throat> we'll start a, a three or four part series, and, and it's going to be taking an old covenant example, bringing it into a new covenant example. Uh, I live in the South, I've always lived in the South, and if you familiar with anything in the South, you know the South has a tremendous amount of squirrels that, especially if you live in a neighborhood that is tree-lined or got a lot of trees, you're going to have a bunch of squirrels in your neighborhood. Also, on the same token, if you do, you're going to see dead squirrels in the middle of the road. And if you think about it, and if you've ever seen this, and people in the South have seen it a multitude of times, squirrel will start across the street, and he'll start darting, and he is quick as a hiccup. And then he'll go back this way, and sometimes he'll turn around and go back that way, and sometimes he'll go back that way. And you don't know what's going through his mind, but I can tell you this. The reason you see a dead squirrel in the middle of the road is because he can't make up his mind. He doesn't know whether to go that way, that way, this way, you know, can't make up his mind. What does that have to do with Christianity? Everything. People like the message of grace. But they have been taught religious principles pertaining to the old covenant so much that they don't know whether to keep this one or try grace over here. They'll try grace a little while over here, then they'll switch back to law over here. They'll try grace a little bit more, and it's just like that squirrel going back and forth. And you know what the Bible says about a double-minded man? He's unstable in all his ways. Keep going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I've tried this. Everything goes along all right for a while, and then something goes wrong. Uh-oh, I better go back over here and cover myself and pick this up also. It's because we cannot make... <clears throat> an intelligent truth decision, truth being from the Holy Spirit, as to what we really need to do, what we should do. Uh, <clears throat> a little background. <clears throat> 10, 12 years ago, I started what was we term Crossway Ministries. And it was to be an emphasis on teaching because there was a tremendous amount of preaching on TV, but very, very, very little teaching. So Crossway Ministries is a teaching ministry. Even though the ministry is called Crossway, everything is under the umbrella like our website, not without blood. Now, you may think about that and say that's a very unusual phrase, and it is. Uh, 
when I first read it, saw it, very unusual. It stuck in my mind. And then I realized that there was not anything we can do in our relationship with God that does not require the blood of Jesus. There's nothing you can do that does not require the blood of Jesus to have a relationship, fellowship with God. Is it biblical? Yes. We'll put it up on the screen. Hebrews 9, 7 says, and this is the only time this phrase is used in the word of God. Hebrews 9, 7 says, but into the second went the high priest alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. So even in the time that God was dealing with, with his people through the sacrificial system of animals. That relationship with him also was based on the portrayal portrayal of the coming shed blood of Christ. So everything, anything, there's nothing we can do. We cannot have a relationship, salvation, gifts, or anything else. It has to be by the shed blood of Christ. So think about that some. Not without blood. It has to be through the blood of Christ. All of us experience problems on a yearly monthly, weekly, daily. Sometimes we may feel like problems come by by the second or by the minute. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it says, We all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity of, nature, and timing of every test and trial you face so that you can bear it. And each test is an opportunity to trust him more, for along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. Verse 14, my cherished friends, keep on running far away from idolatry. Verse 15, I know I am writing to thoughtful people, so carefully consider what I say. Verse 16, for when we pray for the blessings of the communion cup, isn't this our co-participation with the blood of Jesus? And the bread that we distribute, isn't this the bread of our co-participation with the body of Christ? Now, that is 1 Corinthians 10, 13 through 16. And I read using the, pa- the Passion Translation of the Word of God. There are several, I don't know if you've ever... Uh, read or attempted to read or even knew anything about it. But in several verses, the Passion Translation brings out the Word of God in a clear manner that you can really apply it to your daily life, maybe in a far better manner than you can the King James Version. What is he, Paul telling us here? Verse 13, we all experience time of testing. Verse 16 says, we are co-participation with the body and the blood of Christ. Our problem-solving situation, when we run across times of testing, we either look to ourselves 
or we look to God. Paul is telling us that through this time of testing, it is the body and the blood of Jesus that is the answer to our trial, our temptation, our problem, our situation, our circumstance. We are to look to the body and the blood of Christ as that problem-solving example because we are co-participation, we are co-participants with the body and with the blood of Christ. Uh, Romans 6 tells us that, that we were baptized into Christ. It doesn't say baptized into water. It says baptized into Christ in his death, his burial, his resurrection. Same thing. That means we were co-participants. We were there when he faced death and, and died. Death, burial, we were in the grave with him. We rose with him. So no matter the test, God will provide a way of escape, Paul says in verse 13. And of course, the word also tells us that Jesus is what? The way, the truth, the life. So that is our way. It is the way of escape. It is not just a way. You can find many a ways, but there's only one the way of escape. And that's what we are to center in on. 